All right. So <clears throat> what we're doing now is completing unit two in 110 acoustics. And this unit is covering the decibel from hell. All right. So we covered last week, we introduced ourselves to powers and pressures. And we got all the way through the stuff talking about that formula saying if you have a certain amount of pressure against the eardrum, what dBSPL is that? And we said the softest it took to just barely hear a 1,000 hertz tone at one meter distance from a speaker with two ears, the smallest pressure required for us to hear that tone against your eardrum is 0. 0.0002 <clears throat> dynes per centimeter squared. And we said pressure is force over an area. Cool. Okay. So what happens if you have more pressure than that? How many dBSPL would that be? So we went over that formula carefully. We said it's 20 times the logarithm of that pressure over 0. 0.0002. And the 0. 0.0002 is always on the bottom of the fraction. That's the denominator, always. That's our ground. That's the softest it took to hear a 1,000 hertz tone at one meter distance from a speaker with two ears. And we relate all other pressures to that one. So we'll call that one 0 dB SPL. So without any further ado, let's just look at a picture here and share screen and look at the PowerPoint here and we'll, <clears throat> and we'll move to that particular slide. There it is. So we said, okay, let's call 0. 0.0002 dynes per centimeter squared. We'll call that 0 dB SPL. And if it's 0. 0.002, we'll call that 20. And if it's 0. 0.02, we'll call that 40. So every time you increase the pressure by a factor of 10, you go up 20 dB. And we said last week, well, okay, let's, let's, show, let's see something in our, in our notes here. So let's go to our notes and move on down toward page two. And let's look on page two in the middle. And when we do that, let's look right here. There's that formula. dBSPL equals 20 times the logarithm of some sound pressure, call that X, over the reference pressure. And call that 0. 0.0002. First you do the ratio then the logarithm of the ratio, then multiply that by 20. Note the denominator, the bottom, is always constant. So for example, if you had 0. 0.002 dynes per centimeter squared hitting your eardrum, how many dBs is that? Well, 0. 0.002 divided by 0. 0.0002 equals 10. What's the logarithm of 10? Well, how many times does 10 have to be multiplied by itself to equal 10? 1. 10 times 1 is 10. 20 times 1 is 20 dBSPL. And look at our screen. Remember, the first number here on the top is 0 0.002. So let's look at our picture. 0 0.002. Yep, that's 20. So that's the third <clears throat> family of formulas to remember in acoustics. And it's the last one, by the way. Okay? You had two in the unit one, frequency, wavelength, speed of sound. Period is one over frequency. Frequency is one over period. And then you had the second set. Frequency equals wave speed of sound over wavelength. Wavelength equals speed of sound over frequency. Yep. And now you had this one. So now without any <clears throat> further ado, let's go to the top of page three in our notes. And I said to just ignore all of this weird stuff in here. So we won't bother with that. Just move on down. Let's get out of power and stay with SPL. Yeah, we did. We got, we got rid of that last week. So starting at the top of page <clears throat> three, I don't know what, <clears throat> what it's like, <clears throat> excuse me, Alyssa Lloyd, by you, where you are, but I'll tell you something, we got about a foot of snow outside. It has been snowing cats and dogs here all day long and last night, snowing like crazy. We don't usually get snow up in the Pacific Northwest, but by gum, we got it today. I'll tell you. All right. So, to summarize the formula for dB of sound pressure, 
20 times the logarithm of some ratio. Note the three parts, the 20, the logarithm, the ratio. You got to calculate any ratio. You got to know what the bottom is. To tell if a high rise apartment is 10 times taller than a house, you got to know where the ground is. So the reference or the ground for sound is zero dB SPL. And how much pressure is that against the eardrum? 0 0.0002 dynes per centimeter squared. Every time you increase the sound pressure level by a factor of 10, you go up 20. So for example, what's the dB SPL for 20 dynes per centimeter squared? Well, dB SPL equals 20 times the log of 20 divided by 0 0.0002. If you took your calculator out and you divided 20 by 0 0.0002, you'd get 100,000. How many times does 10 <clears throat> have to be multiplied by 10 to equal 100,000? Well, 10 times 10 is 100, times 10 is 1,000, times 10 is 10,000, times 10 is, is 100,000. That's the logarithm of 100,000, five. <clears throat> So what's 20 times five? 100. So we'll keep the number 20 in your head. Go to the picture, 20, 100. Told ya. All right, good. All right, move on down. If you're a nerd, you might say, well, what about the DBs in between? Well, don't worry about them. Okay, the math all kind of works out. But in general, Here's your pressure ratios, 1 to 1, 10 to 1, 100 to 1, 1,000 to 1, 10,000, 100,000, and a million to 1. And this, log, this here shows you the logarithm of those numbers. And it tells you the dynes per centimeter squared of those numbers. And it tells you the dBSPL of those numbers. So this table right here that I'm circling deals exactly with this picture. The table and the picture, the picture and the table, the table and the picture too. All right. So now let's move on and let's talk about doubling sound pressure levels does not double the decibels. For example, if you double the sound pressure level represented by 20, you don't get 40. You get 26. That's because of the logarithms. Every time, let me just describe it to you. I'll stop sharing and just talk. If you have a 1,000 hertz tone and it's 20 dB SPL, and you add another 1,000 hertz tone and it's 20 dB SPL, What's the sum total? 26. It's just because of the logarithms. Okay? So if the sounds are identical in frequency and identical in phase, when you add them together, you get an addition of 6. A 40 dB SPL tone, 1,000 hertz, and another 1,000 hertz tone, that's 40 dB SPL. Put them together, sum total. 46. A 50 dB SPL tone, 1,000 hertz, and another 1,000 hertz tone at 50 dB SPL. Put them together, 56. Okay, you always increase by 6. If you're doubling the sound pressure level, you go up by 6. But that's only if the frequencies are identical. If you took a 1,000 hertz tone at 40 dB SPL and a 1,500 hertz tone at 40 dB SPL and you put them together, the sum total is 43. So if they're not identical in frequency and you put them together, you go up by 3. Let's say you have a machine in a room and it's making 90 dB SPL. It's just going like 60. And you have another machine in the room and it's doing 90 dB SPL. If the two machines are identical, the sum total is 96. But you know what? In real life, that almost never happens. Almost never. Two machines even made by the same company 
the same power, the same everything. They're going to be sitting in different areas of the room, the sound bouncing off of the walls due to the machine, okay, the reverberations, the echo. It's going to make them not identical. In all everyday real life, okay, a machine making 90 dB SPL plus another machine making 90 dB SPL, some total 93. Okay, so we've moved on from last week. We're talking about what happens when you add frequencies together. Add dBSPLs together. Last week we talked about what was the ground, and we defined all of that stuff and talked powers and pressure. You got all that now. Now we're talking about adding sounds together. Okay, so let's read what it says in our notes about exactly that. Here. Due to logarithms, doubling the sound pressures does not double the dBs. For example, if you double the SPL represented by 20, you don't get 40. You actually get 26. If the two sounds are identical in frequency and phase, adding them together is a 6 dB increase. So here you go. For sounds of same frequency and phase, here are some examples of how ratios of pressure work with dBSPL. A two to one increase, a doubling, you go up by six. If you were to do a three to one, add three tones together, you go up by 10. If you were to add four tones together, you'd go up by 12, and so on. If you were to add 10, you go up by 20. Ding, 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 ding. That's just like this one here. Right? Right. Okay, if you increase, if you have a thousand hertz tone at 40 dBSPL, and then you have 10 1,000 hertz tones at 40 dB SPL. How much do you go up by? 20. Now your sum total is 60. Okay, I'll do it again. You have one tone of 1,000 hertz doing 40 dB SPL. You have 10 tones of 1,000 hertz each at 40 dB SPL. What's the sum total? Well, what happens when you increase the pressure by a factor of 10? You go up 20. You go up 20. So 40 plus 20 is 60. There's your sum total. Now, <clears throat> keep going, keep going, keep going. In real life, however, now here we go again. In real life, however, you are not adding together tones of equal frequency and phase. If you have, and this is what I was talking about, the machines. If you have two different frequencies of the same sound pressure level, <clears throat> adding them together increases sound pressure level by 3 dB. And in this case, 45 plus 45 would equal 48. So let's talk about people standing on the street corner talking here. In real life, so for example, you have one guy and he's talking at 65 dB SPL. And by the way, circle that one, 65 dB SPL is average conversational speech. That's the intensity of average conversational speech. My father can beat your father at checkers. la di da your mother wears army boots. Blah, 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 blah. Average conversational speech is about 65 dB. All right, so you have a guy talking at 65 dB SPL. If you were somehow in a science fiction movie able to make 10 clones of that guy, 10 identical guys, and they're each talking at 65 dB SPL, that would be a 20 dB increase. You'd go up to 85. Recall, a tenfold increase is a 20 dB increase. However, 10 different guys, each talking at 65 dB SPL, that would be a 10 dB increase to 75. Just like when you're doubling the frequencies and everything's identical, you go up by six, okay, or double the intensity of two frequencies that are identical, okay, you go up by six, and if the two frequencies aren't identical, then doubling the intensity only goes up by, or adding them together, you only go up by three. Well, three is half of six, 10 is half of 20, same thing. So, just like three is half of six, 
10 is half of 20. So, for example, if a person is singing in a choir at 70 dB SPL, what's the total dB SPL of 100 people each singing at 70? Now, this is more real life. You're talking about a church choir, okay, or a, a band or something. If someone's singing solo, la di da at 70, if they were all, and now you've got 100 people together, each singing at 70. If they were all identical, the increase would be 40. Because when you increase the pressure by 100 fold, you go up by 40. Look, I'll bring this closer. If I increase by 10 fold, I go up by 20. If I increase by 100, you go up by 40. Okay, now back to here again. But they are different people because when you've got a hundred people in a choir, each person's different. Their voices are different. So the increase there, instead of being 40, is 20. 40 is half of 20, just like three is half of six. So when you've got a choir and everybody's singing at 70 dB SPL, the sum total is about 90. And that makes kind of sense, doesn't it? I mean, can you imagine if you did 70 and then you times that by 100? What's 70 times 100? Let me do that on a calculator once. 70 times 100. If we, wouldn't that be insane? So let's just do this. 70 times 100 equals, that would be 7,000 decibels. <laughs> That's insane. Okay, that would blast out your eardrums. So that's why we, that's how this all works. This is the decibel. That's why I call it the decibel from hell. Okay, so when you have someone talking at some decibel level, and you have 10 people each talking at some, that same decibel level, you don't just multiply the dB by 10. That would be insane. It's because you're dealing with logarithms. So you have to remember certain little tricks and doubling things. If they're, if they're identical, you go up by six. Dub, uh, make, increasing by a factor of 10, if they're all identical, you go up by 20. But in real life, that almost never happens. So when you double the sound pressure of two machines, let's say added together, you go up by three. And when you have 10 people each talking at a certain decibel level, you go up by 10, not 20. And when you have 100, you don't go up by 40, you go up by 20. Okay, we've covered that. Let's move on down. Let's go to page four. There you go, we're moving. This is all good. Oh, now look at this. And also in real life, you're not always adding two equal decibels together. You might be adding 60 and 50. So let's say you might have <clears throat> a 1,000 hertz tone at 60 and a 2,000 hertz tone at 50. How now, brown cow? So now you're, not only are, the, are the, the frequencies different so that you'd go up by three or whatever, but also now you're not, they're not equal. You're not adding 20 and 20. <clears throat> Okay, <clears throat> you're not saying, hey, one guy is talking at 65, and now you've got 10 guys talking at 65. It's not doing that anymore. Now the decibel, not only are the people different, but the decibel values are different. Well, when that happens, here you go. If you add two decibel, two sound pressure levels, where one is at least 9 dB more than the other, say 10, 10 or more, your total increases by almost nothing, almost nothing. For example, 45 plus 36 is kind of like 45 and a half. Do 90. 90 plus 80 is basically 90. Look at this. Okay, 90 and 80 is a little bit more than 90, but barely. You know how to best think of this? An elephant plus a mouse is basically an elephant, <laughs> okay? 90 dB SPL represents way more sound pressure than 80 does. Remember, it's all logarithms, 
It's always times 10, times 10. Blah, blah. So 90 dB SPL is way more pressure against your eardrum than 80 dB SPL. So basically, when the two numbers are about 10 dB different from each other, you're basically adding a tiny little bit to the bigger amount. Okay, so basically, 100 plus 90 is going to be like 100 point. Duh, 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 duh. So I'll show you a PowerPoint slide that, that deals with that just to give you an idea. Okay, and then we'll move on from there. We'll leave that one behind. So here you go. That's this slide right here. Look at it. I'll pull it up carefully here. There you go. To add, for example, now, 85 to 90. Now, there is, they're not 10 dB different. They're only 5 dB different. Find the difference between the two numbers. In this case, it's 5. Find 5 on the curved line. Find 5 on the curved line. 5. Follow this point horizontally left to the vertical axis. See my cursor right there. Note it intersects at about 1.2. Here's 1, 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.82. So in this case, it intersects at 1.2. That's the number that would be added to the bigger of the two values, 90. So you'd get 91 and a half. Okay? Let's say if there is no difference between the two values. Okay, I'll let's, the stop share thing is in the way here. So I'll just kind of go like this. Look, if there's no difference. So let's say I'm adding 90 and 90 together. What do you get? What's your increase? Three. Well, that's what we covered in our notes, isn't it? In real life, you're assuming the two things are different. So when there's no different, when they are different frequencies or two different machines, which is almost always the case, you're never adding two identical things together like that. So if you've doubled the sound pressure level, you go up by three. And that's what it's showing you here. Okay? So if you're adding, let's say, oh, let's say uh, 80 and 90 together, What's the difference between 80 and 90? A, a, a 1,000 hertz tone at 80 dB SPL and a 2,000 hertz tone at 90 dB SPL. Okay, you put those two together. What's the difference between 80 and 90? 10. All of 10 here, you'd be adding 0.4 decibels to the bigger value of 90 because this is 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. So 80 and 90 would be 90.4. Okay, and I think that's even what it said in your notes here. Look at this, yeah. Okay, so basically an elephant plus a mouse is basically an elephant. This table here that I'm circling deals with this picture here. This table, this picture. Do you have to memorize that? No. What I'm going to say is, basically, if I ask you on a multiple choice question on a quiz or on, on a test, if I say 90 dB SPL plus 80 dB SPL is basically a set, uh, 90 and 80, 170, wrong, <laughs> 80, wrong, 90, 90, that would be the answer, okay, because 90.4 is close to 90. Or if I and, and D would be none of the above or whatever, the answer would be C. So I would say if a question, if you had a 1,000 hertz tone at 90 dB SPL and a 2,000 hertz tone at 80 dB SPL, if you added those together, the sum total would be close to, and you should probably say 90. Okay, there you go. All right, now let's finish this section and talk about absolute and relative dB values. But before, before we do that, let's just summarize what we did, where we've gone this morning. We talked about this formula. Then we talked about adding dBs together. Right here. And we talked about doubling first. Then we said if the two sounds are identical and you double the sound pressure, you go up by six. 
But in real life, that's not usually the case. You go up by three. Then we talked about choirs or people talking. How much would you go up by? Okay. Then we said, hey, not only are two people different or frequencies different, but maybe someone's singing louder than the other person. Or maybe the two tones, not only are they different in frequency, but they're different in intensity. What happens when you add them together? That's what we finished this little bit with. And we said with the two are different by a factor of more than 10, you're basically the biggest number. An elephant plus a mouse is basically an elephant. Okay? But if you add a tiger plus an elephant, well, a tiger is a pretty big animal. It's not as big as an elephant, but it's fairly big. You know, it's maybe half or a third as big as an elephant. Well, then that's when you'd have to look at this table here and think, well, okay, 85 and 90. Okay, they're, one's bigger than the other, but they're not bigger by 10. It's bigger by 5. Well, an elephant plus a tiger is basically an elephant. You know, that's, it's not basically just the elephant. It, there is some clout to the tiger. And that's when you'd look at this kind of a situation. Okay, so and then of course an elephant plus an elephant is yeah you'd go up by three. So enough on that. Look at our notes now. Relative and absolute dB values. These are very important terms to realize because it gets to us and it describes where we can C A N can add two decibels together like one plus two is three. There are situations where we can, and guess what? In hearing aids, we can, okay? All I've talked to you about is the stuff when you can't, but we're not sitting there adding machines together. We, that's not our job. We're fitting hearing aids on people, and when you're fitting hearing aids on people, there's a really cool thing that happens with the decibel where, it's, where you can add them like one plus two is three. So here we go. Let's look at that so we know it. As we've seen, you cannot simply add two dBSPLs together like one plus two is three. We've been saying that all morning. Because each dBSPL value is absolute. It's a referenced to the ground. Okay, so 90 dBSPL plus 90 dBSPL is not, repeat, not 180 dBSPL. It's basically 93. You're assuming the two sounds are, are, are have different frequencies. Okay? Just assume that. In some situations, however, you can do that. And that is when you're adding a relative dB value to an absolute dB value. What do we mean by that? Hearing aids. So now I'll stop sharing and I'll pull out my little bag of hearing aids show you something here. I'll show you an old-fashioned, oh, here's a hearing aid. Okay, you're looking at a hearing aid. On the top of the hearing aid is a microphone. It picks up sound coming through the air. And then the hearing aid itself adds power, adds dBs to it increases the amplitude. We call that the gain. So the input sound coming into the mic is dBSPL. Some dBSPL, average conversational speech, 65, a whisper, 55, ambient room noise, about 40, okay? By the way, those are real values. Ambient room noise is around 35 to 40 dBSPL. Your ears are almost never hearing zero. The only time you're hearing all the way down to zero is if you were in a soundproof room or something or listening under headphones to, in a quiet room in a hearing test. Most of the time, you got the furnace going and you got the window open or you just have ambient room noise, the background, there's just stuff. Ambient room noise is around 35 to 40 dB SPL. A whisper is around 50 Average conversational speech around 65, 70-ish. Yelling around 80, 85. And then what can cause permanent hearing loss? 85 decibels, SPL, for like eight hours in a row. 
85 for eight hours in a row can cause permanent noise-induced hearing loss, where you will lose hair cells in your cochlea, okay? So when you're talking about noise exposure, it's always the length of time you're exposed to it as well as the intensity. So if you go more than 85, if you go to 90 dB SPL, now you can only be exposed for four hours. If the sound is 95, you can only be exposed for two hours. If the sound is 100, you can only be exposed to it for one hour. Do you get the kind of trend? Every time the noise increases from by 5 dB, your allowed time is cut in half. So the starting point is 85 dB SPL for eight hours a day. 90 for four hours, and so on. Anyway, I'm showing you the hearing aid here. Here you go. And sound coming into the mic of the hearing aid is called input. That's the input sound, and it's always registered as dBSPL. What the hearing aid is adding to that, because that's what hearing aids do, they amplify. What the hearing aid is adding is called gain, G-A-I-N. And gain is always said in simple dB. It's not dBSPL, it's just dB. And then the sum total, input plus the gain, what's hitting your eardrum, what's coming out from the hearing aid, right here, into your ear, okay, that's called the output. And the output is always, again, dBSPL. So let's say you've got 50 dBSPL coming into the mic of the hearing aid, and the hearing aid is giving a gain of 50. What's the sum total? Now it's no longer 53. Nope, it's 100. Now you can add them like 1 plus 2 plus 3. You know why? Because you're adding an absolute value, input, which is dBSPL, and you know that dBSPL always is referenced to zero. It's always referenced to the ground, okay? Gain is a relative dB value. I can add 50 dB of gain to a 10 dBSPL input. I can add 50 dB of gain to a 20 dBSPL input. I can add 50 dB of gain to a 30 dBSPL input. You get it? It's relative, okay? So, <clears throat> 10 dB SPL plus 50 dB gain is 60 dB SPL output. 20 dB SPL input plus a gain of 50 is an output of 70 dB SPL. 30 dB SPL input to the mic of the hearing aid plus 50 dB of gain is an output of 80 dB SPL. You see, in our field, we can add dBs together. Why? Because we're adding an absolute and a relative. Hearing aids, what's the relative dB? It's the what the hearing aid is adding to the input. And that is relative, my friends. I'll give you an example. Think about time, okay? You're in Central Standard Time. You're sitting in the heart of Springfield, Missouri. And in Springfield, Missouri, if I look at my clock right now, it's a little bit after noon. Okay, so what's your time referenced to? Central time. Okay, I'm on Pacific Standard Time. Here it's shortly after 10 o'clock in the morning. So that's my ground. Your ground is central. But here in time, I'll give you a relative value, two hours. Okay, I can add two hours to 10 o'clock and now it's 12. I can add two hours to 12 and now it's two o'clock in the afternoon. I can add two hours to two o'clock in the afternoon and now it's 4 p.m., okay? The two hours is relative. I can add two hours to any time, but I can't add 10 p.m. and 8 p.m. It doesn't, you can't add those together. They don't work. Well, of course, they're both absolute values, okay? I can't add four o'clock in the, what's four o'clock in the afternoon plus six o'clock in the afternoon? And you kind of look at me like, are you nuts? You can't add that. But I can add two hours to four o'clock and now it's six. I can add two hours to six and now it's eight. I guess that's kind of like an analogy of how you can think about absolute and relative decibel values. Okay? So when you, I was talking about a choir of 10 people, 
Those are all absolute values. You can't add them together like one plus two is three. If you've got a lady singing in a choir and she's singing at 70 dBSPL, and now you have 100 ladies in a choir each singing at 70 dBSPL, those are all absolute dB values. You cannot add them together. Otherwise, you'd be saying 70 times 100, and you'd be ending up with 7,000 decibels. <laughs> it's just insane. So that doesn't, that doesn't. That's when you can't add them together. When you're adding two absolute values together, you cannot add like 1 plus 2 is 3. And an example, 90 dB SPL machine and another 90 dB SPL machine, assuming they're different, the sum total, 93. But what was the gain there? 3. 90 plus 3 is 93. So when I did add two machines together, you got more, and what was more, you, what, added, what's, what did you add to 90 to get 93? You added 3. So I guess that must be a gain of 3. Okay, there's your relative value. 90 plus 3 is 93. But if I add 90 and 90 dB SPL together, no, I don't get 180 dB SPL. I get 93, and that was a gain of 3 an increase. Whenever you see the word gain, it's the amplitude, it's the increase. So, okay? So, input to the hearing aid microphone, which is sound in the room, sound from a speaker's voice, gain of the hearing aid, that's what the hearing aid is adding to it, and output is the sum total. So, input and output are dBSPL. Gain is dB. If you're wondering what the little string hanging down here for, that's just to kind of, in a person's ear, that string kind of sits in the concha ball here, and it helps hold the hearing aid in place, okay? But at any rate, that's just, okay, so I'm just trying to relate the decibel to what we're doing in our field. All right, share screen here. Now we're looking, as we move on down, and you'll see all of this listed in terms of time, Absolute versus relative. Think of time as an example. So all of the stuff, hearing aid, input plus gain is output. Input is always specified in dBSPL. Gain is always specified in simple dB. Output is always specified in dBSPL. Now think of two identical machines, each making 90. 90 plus 90 would be 96. That would be a gain of 6. Of course, in real life, they can't be identical. So 90 dB SPL plus 90 dB SPL is 93. This is a gain of 3. To grasp absolute and versus relative, think of time as an example. 4 p.m. or 6 p.m. are absolute time values. They are reference to your time zone. The two term two hours, however, is a relative time value. It can be added to 4 p.m. to make 6, or to 6 p.m. To, to make 8. All right, we're nearing the end of this section. We're doing well. Make sure just keep the concepts in mind. 0 dB SPL and negative values. Always remember that 0 dB SPL does not mean no sound. True, false question. Zero dB SPL means the absence of sound. True or false? And you'll have to say false. It isn't. Okay? Zero dB SPL is actually a pressure of that much against your eardrum. And this is indeed something, even though it's tiny. You can actually have negative dB SPL values, like minus 20. This is actually a pressure of 0 0.00002. You have one more zero. If you put Look at minus 40. That would be a 2 with five zeros in front of it. So every time you decrease the pressure by a factor of 10, you go down 20 dB. Anyway, typical whisper levels, typical sound levels, a whisper, conversational speech, shouting, a lawnmower, a jackhammer, pain, Okay, all of these things looking at, okay, we'll move here. Here's some examples. Now, faintest sound heard by a human ear. And see, this should say dBSPL values. We're talking all absolute values. So actually, the person writing this just calls it decibel because it's for the lay public. 
okay? But you and I both know it would be DBSPL. A whisper in a quiet library, I don't think that's 30. It's around 45-ish, 50. It's got to be. Normal conversation is closer to 70, 65 to 70. And then these values get kind of more actual. So I wrote here on the left, this pamphlet was meant for the lay public. DB should be read DBSPL. Quiet library should say 30 to 35. A whisper is actually closer to 50. Normal conversation is between 60 or 70. The rest is fairly accurate. This gives you all kinds of blah, 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 blah. You read it for your own, just for fun. But how they get some of these values is a little bit strange. Leaves rustling, 20 dB, I don't think so. A whisper at five feet, 30, uh-uh, I don't believe that. This one here too is a kind of, it gives you ideas of really, really loud sounds, okay, that can cause permanent hearing loss. Gives you, just give you some ideas. Don't think you have to memorize that at all. And why this A? I'll just tell you why there's always this A there. Okay, you're going to see A behind here all the time. I'll stop sharing for just a second. Later on in the course, after your midterm, okay, you're going to be learning that people have different hearing sensitivity for different frequencies. Okay, your hearing sensitivity for 2,000 hertz is a little bit different than your hearing sensitivity for 1,000 hertz. And your hearing sensitivity for 500 hertz is a little bit different than your sensitivity for 1,000 hertz. You know why? Because of the resonances of our ears. Like a wine glass at Christmas. When you lick the rim and... Your ears have a certain shape, and they have certain favorite vibrating frequencies. Your ears really like 2,000 hertz and 3,000 hertz. They like 1,000 pretty good, but not quite as much as 2, 3, and 4. They really don't like 500 hertz very much, and 125 and 250, we don't hear those quite as well. So if one was to draw a graph of our hearing sensitivity across the frequencies, and I'll just quickly do this for you now, just for fun. Just, just, just kinda, we're just kind of talking off the top of our head right now. Don't think you have to memorize this because I'm, I'm not. I'm just talking. Okay? If I draw a picture of a pic like this, and I draw a frequency like this in D, B, S, P, L. Okay, see that graph? Good. Okay, so we'll draw the graph of what does it take to just barely hear the different sounds, okay? Your graph is going to kind of look like this, where this would be 1,000 hertz, and this would be zero. See 1,000 hertz there? That's heard at zero dBSPL. Where am I? Here. But if I was at a lower frequency, more dBSPL to just barely hear. Okay? If I'm at this frequency, still need more, but I need that much. 1,000 hertz, I don't need that much. Okay? So our hearing sensitivity is different across the frequencies. And that's what dBA takes into account when people are walking around with a sound level meter and they're measuring sounds in a factory to see if those sounds are loud enough to cause hearing damage in a person. The DBA takes our different hearing sensitivities into account. That's all it is. Don't worry about it. We don't do it in our field, but that's just what that word means, okay? Good. Share screen and look at our notes. Okay, move on down. Last stuff here. Don't worry about inverse square law. That just means as you go away from a sound, it gets softer. So if you double the distance from a sound, you go down by six. Okay? If you double the distance from a, dis from a sound, you go down by six. But that doesn't always really happen in everyday life either because rooms are different and sound bouncing off a wall. Basically, when you double the distance, I would say you kind of go down more like three. Okay? That's all that is. 
Don't worry about it. Leave it alone. Instrumentation that measures in decibels. Well, sound level meters are what people use in factories to tell if they're going to be cause if, if the noise is going to cause hearing loss. Okay, we don't do it in our field, but sound level meters kind of look like, oh, I'll show you a picture of one. Sound level meters kind of look like this. There's a sound level meter. There's a sound level meter. Okay, that's what they look like. Okay, we don't mess around with them. This is that DBA stuff, but don't worry about it. Okay, sound level meters. Now, <laughs> stop useless noise. Okay, let's just talk. Here's that inverse square law. As you double the distance, you go down by about 6 dB, blah, blah. Don't worry about it. Basically, sound gets softer. Okay, then how much do you go down in all reality? Closer to about 3. But here, let's talk about a word that is important to know in our field, <clears throat> and that word is called attenuation. Attenuation. Circle that word. That word means to become quiet. How much do sounds become quiet? Okay, if you put cotton balls in your ear, how much do they dull the sound? Okay, if you put yellow foam earplugs in your ear, and I think they might kind of, here, here's, a, here's one. If you uh, put a foam plug in your ear, like this, okay? One of these spongy plugs, and you jam that in your ear. How much will that attenuate? Well, that will attenuate by around 30 decibels, especially at these frequencies, and then around 30, and then when you get to the higher frequencies, it attenuates even more. And when you attenuate that kind of sound, you're going to have a hard time hearing and understanding speech. So people who are into music and who really want to hear speech in background noise, they get what's called musicians' earplugs. Musicians' earplugs look different. <clears throat> they look kind of like these. They cost quite a bit of money too, okay? But here's why they're so good. If you're looking at ear canal resonance, unaided, here's your ear canal, and this is talking about how much <clears throat> the frequencies that your ear canal resonates with. And it really likes 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Remember I told you that earlier? So your ear canal, unprotected ear, has a resonance around these frequencies. It adds, look at this, it adds about 20 decibels. That's what your ear canal normally does. When you wear a musician's earplugs, you just keep that resonance, but you just take it down. You've preserved that resonance so you can still hear speech. Because when you hear, think of the word speech, speech those high-pitched sounds, those are right here in this frequency. And that's what we're going to be covering more next week in Unit 3. Because we're going to be talking about speech. What kind of sounds are we talking about next week? Complex sounds. They're not just frequency, tone. They're like noises, traffic, speech, music. All the sounds we hear. The sounds we hear are complex sounds. They're made up of many, many, many different frequencies. And they're all kind of at different dBs. Okay? Well, we don't have to freak about it because this isn't a math class, and that's not what we're going to do. But we need to talk about the nature of speech as a sound, because that's the sound that people care about most when they wear hearing aids. They're wearing hearing aids to hear people talking. So when, they're, when we're talking about people talking, we as clinicians need to know what speech is made out of. What kind of sound is speech? Is it mostly low pitch? Is it mostly high pitch? Here's a, a, a preview of where we're going next week. Hold your, 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 your hand to your throat and say, mm, ah, mm. feel it vibrate? Those are vowel sounds, and those are loud and low. They're around 65 dB SPL, average conversational speech. But what, are, what other sounds am I making with my mouth? I'm making 
speech. Fuck. Okay, those are consonants. And consonants aren't 65. Consonants are like 35. They're soft. So when you think of the word sat, bat, hat, cat, sat, mat, the loud part is ah, ah, ah. The soft part is stick. All right? Church. What's the loudest part? Er. The ch, ch is soft. So that, where are those consonant sounds? Those are, those are here. High frequencies. That's why your ear canal resonates with those frequencies. It helps you hear speech. And what, what are the important sounds of speech? The consonants. Because they tell you what the word was. Kittens or mittens. Dishes or fishes. Okay? It's the t -t 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 that tells you what the word. Both of them have it. Okay? Sat and fat. Both of them have a. What makes them different is the t -t 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 -t. and the t -t 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 -t. It's high pitch. Anyway, musicians' earplugs reduce the loudness of sounds. They attenuate by about 15 decibels. They attenuate, but they preserve that resonance so you can still hear and understand speech. Okay? Anyway, just thought I'd tell you that. All right. Exposure limits in general. This is an important slide. 85 dBA for eight hours a day, 90 dB SPL. Now you're getting softer. This one doesn't go quite like the one I had. I would say, I'm much, the way I always say it is 85, eight hours a day, 90, four hours a day, 95, two hours a day, and so on. But at any rate, this just basically tells you that hearing hazard doubles for every increase of 3 dB. In some states, that this is the rule. My rule was 5 dB, but I'm not, work, I'm not the, the governor of your state. I don't control that. States differ. So dB 85 is usually the cutoff, and some say every time the sound increases by 3 dB, the allowed time gets cut in half. I gave you the rule if sound increases by five, the time gets cut in half, but really quite similar. I say, and it's also there's uh, something to note here, and this, that's this cop, okay? Noise is the second most common cause of hearing loss in the world. The most common cause of hearing loss is aging. Can't do much about aging. And what do you lose as you age? High frequency hearing. You have trouble hearing treble. You have trouble hearing consonants. And that's why elderly people say that young people mumble these days. They can't hear the consonants. Okay? They can't. They've got trouble hearing treble. Those are the first sounds you lose. This cop is saying stop useless noise. Elderly people in the United States have poorer hearing than elderly people in Africa. You know why? Because Africa has less industrial noise pollution. Noise-induced hearing loss is the second most common cause of hearing loss in the world. And the saddest thing about it is that it's preventable. If you can hear someone's earplugs and you're not listening to their stereo system or their device, imagine the decibel smashing into that person's eardrum. Okay, we don't look at the sun because we know we're going to get blind, but somehow people think the ear is impervious to the ravages of noise, and it just ain't true. That's so, it's a really something to note if you lose hearing due to noise. Look at your X's and O's here. These X's and O's mean the person has really good hearing, he can hear at 10 decibels all these different pitches 250 hertz, 500 hertz, 1000 hertz. 2,000 hertz. He's got really good hearing under headphones for those. But look where he lost his hearing at 4,000 hertz. At 4,000 hertz. And that is a lot to do with the shape of the outer ear canal resonance. That's this. Okay? Because this is adding to the high frequencies. So noise coming in, this gets added to in the high frequencies. And so your hearing loss occurs in those high frequencies. 
Weird, huh? So these are studies, a summary of three, of five studies on predicted permanent threshold shift due to noise levels. These people said at 85 decibels, you had about hearing loss of about eight to nine to five or six, all these different studies. If the, if the, if the noise was 90, now you had about a 15 decibel hearing loss. If the noise was 95, now you had about a 20 decibel hearing loss. So it's just telling you as the noise gets more, the hearing loss gets worse as well. Sound level meter. This is used to calibrate a sound level meter. Don't worry about that. Sound level meters again. Okay, DBA scale, don't worry about that so much. This is showing you from a hunter who died. Here's his hearing loss, noise-induced hearing loss. Always represents a hearing loss at 4,000 hertz. And when they went into his cochlea, sure enough, the hair cells were damaged along his basilar membrane inside of his cochlea in the high-frequency region. Remember in, in, in anatomy class, okay, what we studied last week in anatomy in 120, we covered the middle ear. We reviewed it. This time, we're going to be going into the inner ear. We're going to be looking more at the inner ear in anatomy. And so we're going to be looking at hair cells. So it's showing you hair cell damage in this person's ear, okay, right along the 4,000 hertz region. Here's a hunter. Now, the hair cell damage was worse in his left ear than his right. Well, if I'm right-handed, my rifle is held like this, and it's my left ear that's facing the rifle. My right ear is hidden behind, so it's not going to get as much damage. Okay? So in that hunter, share screen, when that person died and they looked inside of his inner ears, the hair cell damage was more in his left ear than in his right ear. Now, when you're looking at this, just think about your inner ear being unrolled. The low frequency hair cells, high frequency hair cells. Low frequency hair cells, high frequency hair cells. We'll talk way more about that in anatomy as we carry on. I'm just kind of giving you a preview. The noise induced hearing loss was worse in his left ear because that's the ear that was closest to the rifle barrel. Okay, so that's just showing you all kinds of lovely little things there. That's the end of the PowerPoint. So I'll move back here, see where we are. This is showing you consonants versus vowels. See consonants versus vowels on an audiogram, but I don't like that slide very much. Leave it alone. Don't worry about it. And this is showing you a person with hearing loss, I think. Yeah, if you've got hearing loss in the high frequencies, yeah, typical hearing loss, where I'm circling, of a 65 to 70-year-old. Decent hearing in the low frequencies, worse hearing in the high frequencies. Can't hear 4,000, 2,000, 8,000 hertz very well. So what sounds can he not hear? Consonants. The ticking of a watch. The crickets. The birds. What sounds can he hear? Z, v, j, m, d, b. And all your vowels, I, 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 all your loud sounds that vibrate your voice. Those are louder and lower. Consonants are softer and higher. See how this the speech, how it goes up like this? And that's why elderly people, where their hearing goes down, they can't hear the high frequencies. And elderly hearing in the high frequencies is called presbycusis. Sounds like Presbyterian. Presbyterian means church of the elders. Presbycusis means hearing loss in the elders. Presbyopia means you can't see stuff close up. Like me, I can't read close up. Presbyopia. I got to wear reading glasses. Okay? Presbyopia means my arms aren't long enough to see the page. All right. I'll share the last thing because we're done here, okay? We have finished unit two, and we'll look quickly at our notes and scroll down to where we were. Okay, here's a summary about noise-induced hearing loss. Earplugs attenuate. There's that stuff about attenuation. Musicians' earplugs. What's with DBA? We explained all of that stuff. 
important. So have a read of that because that explains the last stuff that I was talking about on the PowerPoint slides. All right, stop sharing. All right, we're recording now and I'll stop recording. I encourage people to watch this particular Zoom session twice. Always watch a Zoom session twice. Just like when you watch a movie, and you watch it the second time, you get more out of it than watching it just once. Besides, the course might be worth three credits. That means three hours of, of class time. The Zoom sessions are only one hour long. So that's why I say, do take the time to watch things again to get it absorbed. It's very important. Okay, I'll stop recording now.